Hey everybody, Mr. Morell here. Uh, just here to talk to you about homework assignment 9.5, line to best fit, uh, linear versus exponential. So in this homework assignment, we are going to be asked to do a couple things on this front page. Uh, make sure you read these instructions. We need to draw a scatter plot of the data. Then we need to find the equations for the lines of best fit, but we need to do that for both the linear equation and the exponential equation, since those are both kind of the equations or the types of equations we've been dealing with this year in secondary one. We also need to find the correlation coefficients that go with both of those sets of data. Those are also known as regression, uh, a regression number. And then uh, in the in those instructions, it's going to ask us to round three decimal places for that. So we'll make sure to do that. And then we need to decide which of those two lines fits our data better. And we're going to draw that into our scatter plot. I've already kind of gotten us started so that I don't bore you guys too much. And so I went ahead and made the scatter plot already. Now, this kind of looks like it's two different tables, but just because of space issues, this is actually just one table cut into two pieces. So you can see the client starts going this way, and then we would just continue that client's line uh, down below. And then the same for sales. So I've gone ahead and made the scatter plot with clients. Um, as our x-axis. So for example, to find this point of 2130, I went over 21 and up 30, just like that. And same for the next thing. For the next one, I did 23 clients and 30 sales. I went over 23, up 30, and just kind of estimated in that way. Okay. Now I've also gone ahead and typed these numbers into the calculator just to save us um, a headache later on. And so if we go over here, just to remind you how to type it in, we want to push our stat button and then select edit. And you can see here, I've just got all of those numbers already typed into one long line of numbers. Okay, so we've gotten, we got the scatter plot created. Now we need to find the linear equation and the linear regression. Then we're going to find the exponential equation and the exponential regression. So here's how you're going to do that. Let's just go second mode to get us back to our home screen because that's going to help us quit out of what we were doing. And then we're going to push stat. Push the right arrow to go over to calculate. And now to start off, we want to find the linear regression. We want to know which straight line best fits this data. So we're going to pick option four because that's what that means is a linear regression. Option four. And push enter. Now with that all typed in, uh, the really easiest part to find is the regression number. It's this R number right here. That's also your, that's your correlation coefficient. And the assignment asks us to round three decimal places. So here it's going to be 0.973. So we're going to go and write that in down here, 0.973. Okay, 0.973 is our linear regression. Now the next part is that we need to write the equation of the line that best fits this data. So if you look right here, it's kind of telling us the form of the equation, y equals ax plus b. You guys are more familiar with that being mx plus b, but the calculator just kind of puts an a instead of an m. The other cool thing that this screen does is it is going to um, give us an a equals 2.3, blah, blah, blah and b equals negative 13.95 blah 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 and so we're just gonna replace these letters into here okay so our equation is gonna be y equals 2.3 x minus let's see it would be 13.95 which is actually gonna round to a 14 my eraser is terrible okay so the equation for the line that best fits this data, if it was a straight line, is going to be 2.3x minus 14. Now, one way that we can double check that is we could type y or go into our y equals menu, type this equation in. Okay, so 2.3x minus 14. And let's graph that just to see what it looks like. Now, again, if you are not seeing your data look like this, you probably need to zoom better. So you got to push zoom. And then if you go down to option nine, that's going to fit the data around your statistics that you've given it. And that line looks like it pretty much goes through the middle of the data. So we know that that is the right equation for a straight line that would best fit this data. So that's a good thing.
Okay, let's go ahead and do the exponential part now. I'm just going to clear that screen just so it looks a little bit cleaner. Again, we're going to push stat, go over to calculate, down to option zero this time. Option zero is going to give us an exponential regression, which is what we're trying to find. So we're going to push enter, enter again. It's going to think for a little bit. And here we've got our regression number, so 0.982 this time. Okay, and now this time, remember, the exponential equations look different than a linear equation. It's going to look like some number times some number to the x power. So in this case, we're going to have 12.1, I'll say. So y equals 12.1 times 1.04 to the x power. Okay. Now, you might be tempted to just round this to a 1, and I understand that. That's I think I even did that on the answer key. But I'm going to show you in a graph the difference between having this 0 0.04 versus just having a plain 1 in there. So let's go back to our graph. I'm going to erase that old equation, and let's type in the new one. 12.1 times 1.04 raised to the x power. Oops. Okay, and that's going to give our line kind of this nice curve here. So you can see that that line is kind of curving to try to hit as many dots as it can while still being an exponential line. And let me just show you really fast. I'm going to go ahead and delete that 0 0.04 just because if you were rounding normally, you would see that it would look like that. If we were to take out that 0 0.04, look at what happens to our line. It totally loses that curve. So I don't necessarily think you're wrong in your equation for putting uh, 0.1 or sorry 1.0 or whatever if you didn't round to include that 0.4 because you know that's kind of an advanced idea, but that's just why I'm including the 0 0.04 in this video. Okay, the last part of the instructions ask us to draw the line of the better equation. So how can we tell which one is better between those two? Let me go ahead and re-put in that 0 0.04 raised to the x power. And I'm going to also type in the old equation that we had before. Get them on the same graph so that you can see. So again, there's our exponential line being graphed right there. Here comes our linear one. And our question is, okay, well, which one of these two lines better fits the data? That's a little bit tricky because this line here kind of goes through the middle almost perfectly. But this one seems to hit more dots as it curves. Well, there's a way we can check, and you guys have access to this um, if you're in my class. And remember, we can compare the correlation coefficients to kind of this number line that I've created for you guys. So the idea of the correlation coefficient is that the farther away we are from zero, the stronger the correlation, the better fit that line is. So here we're going to be comparing point 973 to 0.982. They're both so, so close, but they're a little tiny bit different. So here we go. Let me see again if I can hold this. 0.90 or 973 is going to be somewhere over here, but 0.82 or 0.982 is going to be just a tiny bit closer to positive one. So since the exponential um, correlation coefficient is just a little tiny bit closer to positive one, that's going to be our better line. So it does not need to be perfect at all. Again, let's just clear this um, old equation. I don't really want this linear equation in there anymore. We just need to sketch this curved line on our paper just to show that you know that that exponential one is better. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of try to do that here with one hand. Our line kind of curves something like that. Okay, almost perfect. Oh, I'm so good. Anyway, that's how you're going to answer this front page. So I'm going to leave number two to you guys. And let's go ahead and look at the back page, which is very similar, only this time we don't need to create a scatter plot, but we do need to type in the data. Okay, so remember to type in the data. We're going to push stat, go over, or no, just push enter to edit. And now we're going to edit these two lists. Okay. 
Now, where a lot of you guys keep making mistakes is you highlight L1 and then you push delete. Do not push delete. That will totally erase the list and it takes a little while to get it back. We just want to push clear and then enter and that will clear out the contents of your list rather than deleting the entire list altogether, including the L1 part. Again, go up and highlight L2, push clear and then enter. And there we go. We've got clean lists. So this equation, it looks like it came off of the Big Mac menu or the McDonald's menu. It's going to list a bunch of their different sandwiches, how much total fat that they have, and how many calories they have. So I'm going to just type in this list as quickly as I can using my one hand. Uh, this is going to be my L1 list. This is going to be my L2 list. So here we go. Uh, we've got 9, 13, 21, 30, 31, 31, 34, 25, 28, 20, and then 5. Okay, now we can double count. This is asking us for a 12th number, which means we have typed in 11 numbers into our list. The 11th number was 5. So if we come over here, let's just double count, make sure we got them all. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Perfect. Okay, let's go over to L2 and do the same thing. So L2 should have 260, 320, 420, 530, 560, 550, 590, 500, 560, 440, and 300. And we can see that our numbers lined up perfectly, so we've done the, a good job. Okay, same idea happening here. We need to find the linear equation and the linear regression. So let's go back to our home screen. I'm just going to push clear to clear that up. And we'll push stat over to calculate, option four, and then enter. Okay, here we go. There's our equation. Y equals, I'm going to replace the A with this number, 11.7x, okay. And then we have plus 193.9, plus 193.9. Our regression number is 0 0.974, no, 0.975. We're in around three decimal places again. Okay, and now we're going to look for our exponential equations. So clear that out, stat, calculate, and it was option zero. So I'm just going to type zero, push enter. Okay. So again, there's our equation. It's going to look like a times b to the x power. So y equals a is 232.9 times 0.9. Uh, let's see, to avoid the problems from last time, we'll do 0.94 to the x power. And this exponential number is 0.964. Okay, let's just double check and make sure that everything is kind of okay. We'll make sure we got the right equations. So if I push graph, it's actually going to go back and give me that old curved equation that we had. You can see that our dots even aren't there anymore because they're not in our window. So to get rid of that line, push y equals, then push clear. And if we go back to graph, there it is. Now to get our window to fit our dots, we're going to push zoom. Remember option 9 is our, our, our is going to move the window to fit the statistics. And that's what our scatter plot looks like. So here we go. I'm just going to quickly type in those equations so that we can make sure that they really do kind of fit the data. 93.9. And also we had 232.9 times 0.94 raised to the x power. Good, that line looks like it's going right through the middle of the data, so that's pretty good. Now where's our curved line? Uh, let's see. I don't know if I can see the curved line, but it might be really closely matching the other one. I'm just going to turn off that linear one. So to turn off the linear equation, I just highlighted the equal sign and pushed enter. So it's just going to graph this line. Let's see if it just kind of overlapped really well. No, that's not what happened. Okay, let's make sure that I got that right. We got 
0.9. Oh, doy. I totally wrote that equation wrong. B wasn't this number here. Sorry, I was looking at my phone instead of the paper. B is actually 1.03. We're going to have that same issue as we had before. So 1.03. Okay, 1.03. Let me just go change that equation really fast. I'm going to turn that back on. 1.03 raised to the x power. Push graph. There's our line. There's our curved line there. Okay, again, so, so close. They both are very close to each other. They look very similar. So our correlation coefficients are going to be very similar. But we need to figure out, to answer part E, which equation better fits this data. Well, it's going to be the one that's either closest to 1 or closest to negative 1. So in this example, this number right here is closer to 1. So the equation that best fits the data is going to be the linear equation. Okay. Now, using only the better equation, how many calories would be in a sandwich with 26 grams of fat? So we're going to use the linear equation because it was the better one. And where there's an x, I'm going to plug in 26. Because remember, our x numbers represent total grams of fat. Okay, so let's go back to the home screen. Clear that out. I'm just going to put in 11.7. And then I'm going to replace the x with 26. So times 26 plus 193.9. Let's push enter and see what happens. It's a little hard to see because my calculator is messed up. But that is 49. What is that? 498.1. So 498.1. That's how we're estimating how many calories would be in a sandwich that had 26 grams of fat. Okay. Again, using the same equation, using the better equation, we're going to plug in the number 40 into that equation there where there's an x. So over here we're going to do 11.7 times 40 plus 193.9. Push enter and we get 661.9. 661.9. That's how many calories we would estimate would be in this sandwich. Okay. That's pretty much what I've got for you today. I think that you can do this one down here. Um, and I hope that you have good luck and happy spring breaking.